Hey, Newbie Dan here. I'm working on a shop cabinet, and that means I had a big box I needed to glue up and clamp. Since I don't have a ton of experience gluing things up, especially not things this big, I decided to try several different clamping techniques. I don't necessarily think these are the best techniques, but maybe the next time you have to glue up something big, this will help you think outside the box. First, I did a literal dry run without glue. I'm using corner clamps to position everything in the right place. I don't know how anyone does this without corner clamps. You can buy clamps like this one from Rockler, or you can save a lot of money like I did and build them yourself. How do you build them? I'm so glad you asked. Watch my build video, of course. And if you want to help support this channel, consider buying the plans. Okay, end of advertisement. I started with some F clamps. But even though these are cheap clamps, I'd need to buy a bunch more, and that adds up. I have some pipe clamps, but not enough that are big enough, and besides, they're heavy and cumbersome. I thought about using my Bessie strap clamp, but it's not long enough. I have a couple of these cheap Harbor Freight ratcheting straps that I use whenever I pick up some long lumber, and I figured I'd give them a try. Naturally, I wanted pressure on the spots I'd be gluing, so I cut up some scrap wood and used double-sided tape to position them on the cabinet. I put the strap around the cabinet, but realized the strap would keep falling off while I tried to tighten it, so I tried some tape. That seemed to work okay, but when I realized I hadn't positioned the strap correctly, and there wasn't anything I could do except take the tape off and try again, I knew I needed to change something. So I decided to cut a slot in each of them. The width of my kerf makes the perfect slot for these straps, so that made it easy. By the way, if you cut them like this, make sure you keep your hand away from the blade using something like this eraser. And make sure that if the stock gets kicked away somehow, your hand won't end up in the blade. It was around this time when I realized that my Bessie strap clamp uses the same size strap as the ratcheting straps. So I took the clips off the Bessie clamp and put them on one of the ratcheting straps. By the way, you can buy these clips by themselves without having to buy the entire Bessie strap clamp. So I put glue on everything and repositioned the pieces in the corner clamps. See how great these things are? I put the F clamps on the bottom. I put the back on just to help make sure everything's square. These slotted scrap pieces work great. Very easy to get the strap on, and to readjust it if needed. Very important. Oddly enough, it took almost the exact same length of time to get the strap with the Bessie clips on. After double checking everything, I let it dry overnight. Taking off the ratcheting strap with the Bessie clips was of course a piece of cake. So was taking off the second ratcheting strap, but I'm not done with that yet. And of course, the F-clamps are pretty easy, too. Now it's time to remove the slotted scrap pieces with the double-sided tape. Normally, this comes off relatively easily, but since it sat overnight, not so much. Make sure you don't cut your fingernails right before you do this. I don't know if you can see it or not in this picture, but removing the double-sided tape pulled up some of the fibers on the plywood. But since this is Baltic birch plywood, it's no big deal because I can sand it down if I need to. Still, it's something to think about. And obviously, the corner clamps come off easily. So here's what I came away from this with. First off, you know I love the corner clamps, and that hasn't changed, but they're not really for supplying pressure to the glued up surfaces. They're for holding everything in place while you either drive screws or add clamps. So for adding clamping pressure, my first choice is F clamps or something similar. Easy to put on, easy to take off. But of course, you have to spend money on them. These Harbor Freight clamps only cost about $8 per clamp, but that's $96 if you have three layers of them. And you have to store them somewhere. I think it's a toss-up for second place between the two ratcheting straps. By the way, these are 15 feet long. Or at least you can throw them 15 feet. And cost about 10 bucks each at Harbor Freight. The best clips are easier than I thought they'd be, although they're still a little cumbersome. But you have to admit they come off easy, and they're easy to store. It costs about $16 for a package of six. Yes, six. The taped on pieces of slotted scrap wood worked great, but they definitely took some effort to remove. Since they're super easy to make, I just threw them away when I was, 
Wait a minute. Let me get this out of there. I just threw them away. So no storage issue there. So what will I reach for next time? If I had enough clamps of the right size, that's what I'd use for sure. But since I don't, I'll probably do it the same way I did it this time. F clamps and two ratcheting straps. And I'd probably pick up another set of Bessie clips because they're just quicker in the long run. So what are your thoughts? Got any better solutions? Leave a comment below and let me know. And show me a little love by giving this video a thumbs up. Thanks! Check out the description for links to products seen in this video. Just scroll down, click Show More, and scroll down until you see the links. And if you like what I do here, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to ring that bell to get notified about new videos. Thanks!